Hi everyone, welcome to your Pilates. Today we're going to be quite chilled out um, because that's, that's what I feel like doing, so that's what we're going to do. Um, I'll give you a few options to add in some out and out strength, but for the most part, this is going to be moving rather than, you know, rather than pure strength and um, quite a lot of rotating going on as well. So let's see how we go. I want us to start lying and I want us to start by breathing. So that sounds pretty chilled out to me. So bring yourself down onto the floor, onto your mat. I want you looking straight up at the ceiling. So if that means you need a wee head pad or a wee folded towel behind your head, by all means do that. Sometimes if you don't have that there, what will happen is you'll end up looking somewhere behind you. And that's an indication either just try and reposition your head or just something to prop you up a little bit. Brings you into a nice alignment. Let yourself scan down your body until you get to your toes and then think about where your feet are. Can you have your feet and your knees and your hips all roughly in alignment? So if you think you've got your feet stuck in two tram tracks, so that they can't move or they can't wander off. They're pointing straight forward. Your knees are in that alignment that runs up to your hips. Let yourself soften at the front of your hips. Bring your hands onto the bottom of your rib cage so that your fingers are touching just and breathe into those hands. So as you breathe in through your nose, your fingers might separate a wee bit. And as you breathe out through your mouth, your fingers come back together. So I want most of this movement to be around where your hands are, just at the base of your rib cage. Your belly's going to rise a bit as well. And that's absolutely fine. What I don't want is too much happening in and around your chest. Particularly when we get a bit tense and stressed. And I think there's a lot of that going around. Particularly when we get tense and stressed, we hold a lot of tension around here and all our breath goes right up into this shallow part of our upper chest. So can you let that chill out and breathe lower down? Don't have to be big massive breaths, just a middling kind of a breath. But think about letting that chest, each time you breathe out, let it relax a bit more. Let your rib cage come heavier a bit more. One more breath in. And as you breathe out, let your rib cage, let the back of your head come heavy. And then I want you to bring your attention to your pelvis in and around the bottom of your waist. And I want you to start with a few pelvic tilts. So if you imagine a tray of drinks on your belly, just right below your belly button. As you breathe out, can you tilt that tray of drinks towards you so it will be spilling towards you? Your lower back is going to flatten without jamming into the floor. This is your imprint. And then can you go gently the other way? Let your back arch just subtly and then keep rocking between those two positions. So we're thinking a gentle movement here. It's not a forcing it. And we're not overly interested in where you get to each time. It's the, the smooth movement between these two positions. See if you can control it from your abdominals. So rather than your bottom muscles kicking in, and they'll try to, can you get those abdominals working? Keep your rib cage nice and heavy throughout as you tilt north to south. So your tray of drink spills towards you, then it spills towards your feet. And just notice that your low back moves in conjunction with your pelvis. Settle yourself into the middle so you'll have a bit of a gap in at your lower back. You're not fully flattened, you're not fully arched, you're in the middle, you're in neutral position now. If that was north to south and your tray of drinks spilt towards your feet and towards your head, can you spill your tray of drinks to the side and then to the other side? So you're letting your pelvis tilt to one side, one hip bone goes down, one comes up and then tilt it the other way. Bit weird, this one takes a while to figure it out. Explore it. You can have a play about with this. This is gentle movement around your base of your pel base of your spine and around your pelvis. In around your hips and the reason I'm so interested in this is because yesterday I thought it would be a good idea to run up a mountain and even better I thought it'd be a good idea to run down a mountain. It wasn't a very big mountain. 
fighting, but still. And it would appear that my body, after however many weeks of not doing that, has just grumbled a bit. There's a lot of achy bits, and one of those achy bits is my lower back. So we are gently moving to try and ease this off. I think there's a lot of us are going to be doing different things over the next little while. You know, we've been in the house a lot, we haven't been doing our normal stuff a lot, and that is changing. So just cut yourself a bit of slack if your body grumbles a bit and remind yourself that gentle movement is good for it. And then see if you can take that pelvis movement into a circle. So what you can do is imagine you've got a clock face on your lower belly and see if you can travel around the edge of that clock face as if you're trying to roll a marble round. Now your knees are going to move a bit but try not to have them waving all over the place. See if you can keep them relatively steady and then your hip sockets, your hip joints have to move a wee bit. Strange way of saying the ball and socket joint of your hip has to move a little bit. Let's try the other direction. Rolling that marble around that clock face, you might find that some of the numbers on your clock face are a bit elusive. So each time you roll that marble around, see if you can make it a bit smoother. See if you can visit every number and turn one more circle round. I know this doesn't look very exciting on video, but hopefully you can feel what's going on. You're introducing that movement. And then settle yourself into a nice middle position where you're even left and right and you're even front and back. And then from there, little breath in as you breathe out, drawing up your pelvic floor, narrowing your waist a bit, but no change in your spine as you peel your right foot up off the floor into single knee fold. Breathe in, and as you breathe out, return. So single knee folds, using your exhale on the way up, breathe in, and use your exhale on the way back down. We can all do this. So I just want you to notice what happens around your hips. Your hip flexors have to work here, but can you keep your spine nice and stable without forcing it to be stable? This doesn't take a massive amount of strength, so you don't need the massive amount of contraction around those abdominals, but let's have some. So that gentle narrowing of your waist, that, that corset muscle, that transversus, that wraps around your belly, your deepest abdominal muscle, it wraps around your belly and attaches into your lower back. Let's see if we can find that guy just gently and it stabilizes those abdominals. And then next time your right foot is up, so as you breathe out your right foot is up, your knee is directly above your hip and your foot is in line with that knee and you're pointing through that ankle. Can we take this into uh, one leg circles? So as you breathe in, your leg comes, your right leg comes out to the right, and as you breathe out, you circle down, you circle around, back to where you came from. Little pause. Breathe in, start your circle. Breathe out, down, and around, and back. So your whole leg is moving here. It's not just from your knee, it's your whole leg moves. And again, keep going, same leg, same direction. Check what's happening around your chest. Watch that you haven't got super tense across there. One more that direction. So breathing in, breathing out, circling down and around and back. Same leg, change direction. So breathe in as you come across your midline gently. And as you breathe out, circle down and around and back. You'll notice as you do this, there's parts of this circle, similar to your pelvic clock, there's parts of this circle that are going to be difficult. So each time you get to those difficult bits, see if you can breathe out, use that exhale to make it a little bit stronger as you stabilize through your pelvis, through your other leg. Your other leg stays steady. Watch it hasn't wandered away out to the side to try and counterbalance. Let's have one more of this leg. So inhale as you start your circle, exhale down and around and back. Let's set that foot down. Your left leg is peeling up. Find that start position. Nice and stable through your waist. And then let's start by going as you breathe in, coming out to the left, out, out to the outside of your body. And then breathe out as you circle down and around and back. So it's that whole leg that moves. So you'll notice your hip, so your hip joint is flexing and extending, rotating as well, as you move through this. Watch what's happening to that other knee. 
it will try and come out to the side. It might even start doing its own wee mini circles and have a look at it. What's it up to? Breathing in as you come out, breathing out as you come down, around and back. I've got my hands on my pelvis because sometimes that's a really nice way to tell if you're moving, if you're tilting and rocking and rolling. If you're moving all over the place, you can make it a little bit less intense by making your circle smaller. So this knee could go the size of a football or bigger, or your circle could be the size of a tennis ball, it could be tiny. Probably it'll be somewhere in between those two things. Let's have two more. So inhaling as you come across your midline and down and around and back. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. You're back where you came from. Set that leg down. From here, I want you to come into your leg slide. So your foot stays on the floor one leg at a time. Start with your right leg. As you breathe in, slide that leg long. I'm colliding with the wall, but you guys can keep going and breathe out, come back. I wonder if I come back a bit. Let's see. You might lose my head, but you might be able to see my feet. So as you breathe in, slide that leg along. That's better. And as you breathe out, bring it back. As you breathe in, slide it long. And as you breathe out, bring it back. Breathing in to slide long. So your whole waist is staying steady here. We're doing a lot of work in a nice neutral spine. So you're waking up those stabilising muscles. If you wish with this, as you alternate leg slides, you can bring an opposite arm into it. This is where I'm going to struggle because I haven't got the width. But as your right leg slides, your left arm comes up towards the ceiling and if you've got the space, it can go right behind you. And then as you breathe out, everything returns. So it's opposite arm, opposite leg as you reach. I want you to really reach with your toes, with your ankle, with your knee, super straight leg. If you're bringing your arm into it, it's a super straight arm. It can come way overhead, I just don't have the space. And then throwing it back. And try to keep that foot in contact with the ground the whole time. Once you lift that foot off the floor, it becomes a very different exercise because your body has to cope with the weight of your leg as it goes super straight. And that's a long lever and that's hard to do. And we're not really about hard to do today. We're about gentle movement and we're about stabilising. Let's have one more each side. So reaching long, drawing back in. Now, you can stay with what you've just been doing. If you want a little bit of strength, then what you can do is bring your hands in behind your head. This isn't for everybody. I know some of you guys aren't curl up people. So if you're not a curl up person, stick with what you were at. But if you want to, as you breathe in, you curl yourself up. Let's do it this way around. And as you breathe out, come back and return your leg. As you breathe in, start with the head nod. As you curl and you reach. And as you breathe out, bring it back. Try to keep that pelvis steady. I know I promise no strength, but a little bit of strength. And reaching long, long, long. I must have slid down the room a wee bit because I'm colliding with this wall earlier, but I want you guys to have perfect form, so super straight leg, super pointy toes, really reach. And back down. And curling up. Find a bit more height if you can. And back down, last one each side. As you curl up, watch that you don't leave your head behind. It leads the movement and then you curl up and you reach that leg long and you bring it back and you lay yourself down from here. Can you walk your feet together? So your big toes touch, your heels touch, your knees are together. Bring your arms out into a low V. I'm going to shuffle back down again so you can see. And we're going to rotate. So I want you to apply a piece of blue tack between your knees, another piece between your ankles. Those do not slide past each other. So a little breath in. As you breathe out, your knees are going to go to your left. Your head's going to go to the right. Do not let those knees slide past each other. You're going to get amazing rotation through your rib cage. Stop wherever you get to. Your knees will not get to that floor. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, use those abdominals to draw those knees back in. Nice. Let's go the other side. Breathe in the centre. Breathing out, sending your knees to the right. Let your head turn to the left. Glue them together. Don't let them slide past each other. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, return. So keep going with that. If you're particularly backy, 
then I'll allow you to have them slide past each other. So it is possible to do that, but you get, it's a very different kind of movement. Subtle change has a big difference here. And return. So as you send your knees to the right, your left foot is going to lift off. You're going to be showing the soles of your feet to the side of the room. Let your opposite shoulder stay down and really breathe in to that top, that open part of your rib cage. And as you breathe out, return back round. Knees to the left. This is your last one to this side. Enjoy that movement. You might get a bit further than your first one. And then draw those knees back. Last rotation. Let your knees go to the right. Let your head go to the left. Breathe in there and breathe out to return. Very nice. From here, we're coming onto our side and we're going to rotate again. So what you're going to need is some sort of probably a good thick folded towel if you have it so you can see i've got you know quite a thick block plus a little soft head pad on top so you want something that's a decent bit of thickness i want you to place your ear at the very front of that so that you've got most of it behind you your arms are coming out in front of you like a crocodile your knees are bent up to about mm, 45 degrees stack your knees stack your feet they stay stacked stack your hips which probably means you're going to send your top hip slightly farther away from you so that you create a little gap in at your waist. The stability that we talked about, the stabilizing muscles are now switched on. If you just let that collapse, you can be quite squidgy in at your lower waist. If you send that top hip away, you can find those muscles switch on at your lower waist. All those friends, all our stabilizers. So we're going to rotate, but if you're not overly familiar with this, just watch the first couple or even the first one so as you can see what we're at. Technique really matters with this one. So let's breathe in, just your arm moves up. Then I want you to stabilize that shoulder. So as you breathe out, you roll away from that underneath arm and your rib cage and your arm move as one unit. As you rotate around, your head follows that movement. It rolls backwards on your towel. Don't let your knees lift. Breathe into the top of your rib cage and breathe out, come back down. So if you want to watch another one and then join in, let's go for it. So breathe in, just your arm. Breathe out, stabilize, really let that arm come down into its shoulder socket as you rotate round, follow your hand. Watch where your arm goes to. If your hand is getting to the floor, it's because you've let that shoulder do all sorts of weird things. I want you to keep this shoulder nicely in line with your rib cage and the whole lot moves as one. So the only way you're allowed that arm on the floor is if the whole back of your rib cage is on the floor and that is not going to happen. So your arm will be flying free in space. Breathe in when you're there and breathe out close. So joining in if you haven't already, inhale just that top arm moves. As you exhale you rotate round, get that openness. This is feeling much nicer than the first one. Breathe in and breathe out, close back down. Two more. Breathe in. Breathing out to rotate round. Watch those knees stay together. Hips stay stacked, so it's all rotation around your rib cage. Breathe in, and as you breathe out, close down. Last one. Breathe in, just your arm moves. Breathe out, leave that underneath arm there as you rotate away from it. Breathe in when you're there. And breathe out to close back down. From here, you can take your, or you can thin down your towel if that's what you're going with. So you want a little bit of towel, you can fold it if you want, in between your arm and your ear. Your arm ideally is long above, of your, up above your head, I've run out of space. Bring your knees back till they're yeah, 45 degrees or similar, so your feet are in line with your bottom, your hip is still lengthened. We're going for our oysters that we've been doing, so can you keep your feet down, open that top knee up, and close it down. And open your top knee up, and close it down. Lovely. So. Waist stay steady, hips stay steady. You don't roll forwards or backwards through those hips. Good job. Let's have three more. We're waking up these glutes. Because even on a day when we're not thinking much strength, it is super important to have nice glutes. And last one. 
and then I want you to hover that top leg. So hover it at hip height. So your foot is now separated from its mate, your knee is separated, your hips aren't going anywhere. Keep this steady through your waist. It's nice to have your hand there if you can or in front of you for stability. I want you to sweep that leg forward and sweep it back. Your spine is not changing. Don't let it round and arch and round and arch. It is your leg sweeping forward, sweeping back. So if you imagine you've got that leg resting on the top of a nice shiny glass coffee table, you are gliding that leg at the same height along the surface of your coffee table. Make sure it comes forward, but you don't come so far that you're rounding your back. And as you go back, use those glutes, extend your hip without extending your low back. So smooth as you can. Find that extension. We pause there maybe. Just get those hamstrings and those glutes working and sweep it forward. You can stay with this. If you're feeling stronger, you can lengthen that leg. I'm going to have to go on a bit of an angle to give you, show you what I'm doing. So you can lengthen that leg, same idea, Whoop. you need a bigger ring than I do, than I've got. Sweep it forward and sweep it back. So if you're going for the straight leg version, it's harder. And it's harder because you've got a longer lever, so your heavy leg is further away from you. So it's more challenging, it's more tempting to lose that good technique, but you're going to keep good technique, right? So you're going to keep your waist long. You're going to keep your spine neutral and you're definitely going to have a wee pause at that extension. Notice that it doesn't come from your lower back, it comes from the front of your hip. And sweep it back and we have one more. So sweeping forward and sweeping back. Good job from there. Let your leg come down while we go the other side. So we're going to start with our rotations. So... Get yourself your thicker towel. Remember your ear goes at the front of this, which gives you loads of space behind. Arms out in front like a crocodile, hands stacked, shoulders stacked, knees in front of you, knees stacked, feet stacked, waist long. So you've got that wee gap in at your underneath waist. As you breathe in, that top arm moves. As you breathe out, watch it rotate. Keep an eye on that hand. Watch that your shoulder stays nice and steady. Breathe in when you're there. Enjoy the extra stretch as you breathe into the top part of your rib cage, And as you breathe out, you close your crocodile back down. Breathe in just your arm. Breathing out to rotate. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, moving back as you close your crocodile, crocodile back down without forcing it, can you go even further on your next one? As you breathe in, your arm comes up and as you breathe out, leave that underneath arm behind. Even think of those underneath fingers reaching away. So you get this opposition between one arm and the other arm. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, close back down. One more. Breathe in, open. Breathe out, rotate. Breathe in when you're there and breathe out, close back down. From there we're going oystering, so make yourself a lower cushion if you want. If your underneath arm can go long above your head, great, you can see that is not going to happen for me. Your knees come back into about 45 degrees, top hip is still long, feet are in line with your bottom and let's open that top hip and close it down. And open. So what we're doing here is letting your hip open. So you can see what's happening is my knees coming up. My hip has to open. You might feel stretchy stretch in front of your thigh. But my waist and my pelvis and all of that stays the same. So I'm stabilizing through my spine as I'm moving through that ball and socket joint of my hip. And all those structures in and around my hip are having to either work or pay out or do something. So, in a controlled way, because our feet are down, our knee is bent. Let's keep our knee bent, hover that knee onto your coffee table, slide it forward, slide it back. So smoothly gliding here. As you come forward, there's a real temptation to round your back to get that knee towards your nose. I'm not interested in your knee reaching your nose. I want you to really find that flexion through your hip without changing the shape of your back. 
And then as you go the other way, the temptation really is to arch your back and get that foot somewhere close to the back of your head. Not what we're after. I want you, as you flex, to keep your spine neutral. And as you extend, keep your spine neutral. And you might really notice that stretch along the front of your thigh. And you probably will really, really notice your glutes working to do that extension for you. And again. And if you want to flick this into the longer leg version, the more difficult version, then you're sweeping forward. Keep that leg on its glass coffee table and you're sweeping back. Watch that you don't arch. It is really tempting, especially if you've been sitting for a long time and you're tight through the front of your leg to the front of your hips, the front of your thighs, which a lot of us are, especially with a lot of sitting on the sofa. So just don't be surprised if your leg doesn't go that far behind you. I want you to go where it goes to use those glutes to find that last bit of extension without flinging it back and extending your back. And sweep it back. One last one. So sweeping forward and sweeping back. Very nice. From there, you are coming onto your back. So, we head pat. If you want your wee head pat, come onto your back. You're looking straight up at that ceiling. Lift your left leg. Put your left ankle on top of your right knee. Let your left knee come out to the side. You may already be enjoying, if that's the right word, experiencing a stretch along the outside of your hip. If that's plenty for you, that's fine. If you need a bit more, hands in behind that right thigh. Hug it towards you. Keep thinking that left knee's going away from you. And you'll probably find yourself a stretch. You can have a wee rock from side to side. You don't have to stay frozen in space. Just see if that brings you in and out of that stretch a wee bit. I mean, remember, we're not looking for your absolute end zone. We're looking for a gentle stretch. Comfortable stretch. You might not agree with comfortable, but I actually really like this. I think it really opens up your hips. So rocking from side to side. And then let's swap sides. So your right ankle comes on top of your left knee. Let your right knee come out to the side. Hug your knee in. And rock from side to side. Alright. Ooh, that's tight. I'm going to blame the mountain for that. I think I might be doing a bit more of this later on. This is a nice one you can just come into. You know, if you're sitting watching TV or anything, come on to the floor. Just enjoy that stretch side to side. Let me just stay here. And then from here, we're coming up to sitting. So make your way up. I want you to sit with your feet pretty wide. Your hands can be quite far behind you. Let your knees come to one side. So your outside hip will lift. And then let your knees come to the other side and your outside hip will lift. So rolling through. I'm going to give you an alternative for this. I was going to say if this is becoming easy, but for me right now this is just really nice because as I come over I'm getting a different kind of a hip stretch. And it's also feeling different on both sides, so don't be surprised if that's the case. While we would love to think we're symmetrical creatures, we're not. So don't be surprised and don't be, don't be concerned if it feels a bit different one side or the other. So what you can do, if this is feeling easy and you want to try something a little bit more advanced, is when you bring your knees down, I want to introduce you to something called 90-90. And that is where you have a 90 degree angle at your knee and at your hip and at your knee. Now I appreciate this is going to be hard to see on the camera, but hopefully you can see on yourself. So if you had a great big cardboard box, it could sit in between one thigh and your other calf. Yeah, and move slightly to one side because what you're going to do is glue those feet to the floor. Glue your feet to the floor, glue your feet to the floor, glue your feet to the floor, and you end up in something approaching 90-90 the other way. Now you can roll, absolutely roll back as you come through. Feet are glued to the floor. And you come up to 90-90. Now you may always be back a bit, but if you can, you're trying to come up further, so you're up sitting higher. And then roll back, roll over to the other side. Those feet are still glued to the floor. Oh, you're in 90-90 the other way. Where could you go if this is too difficult? Have your feet closer together and do what you were just doing. That's quite nice.
knees don't have to come to the floor. If you can get them, then great. That's what we're working towards. Hip mobility, hip internal rotation, hip external rotation. Each time you come up, can you sit up high for me? And then you can roll around and you're sitting up high. One more each side. Sit up high. And sitting up high. And then from here, can you sit on your sit bones? Which may require you to sit on some height. I've got a couple of blocks because I feel like sitting quite a bit higher for me. You may need more than that again, you'll know. You may even want to sit on a chair. Sitting on a chair is absolutely fine for this. So you're sitting on your sit bones. Your spine is lovely and tall and growing up from that nice firm base. Make sure that you have enough space around the front of your hips and if you need to go higher and sit on a chair, you sit on a chair, that's fine. Your arms are coming out in front, we're going to rotate. This is like a modified bow and arrow. So let's, I really, really like this one. Let's see how we go. So as you breathe in, you stay centered and as you breathe out, your right elbow is going to bend. You're going to turn and rotate towards the right and your right hand comes to your collarbones. Your left fingers reach far in front of you. And as you breathe in, uncurl yourself, come back to the center. As you breathe out, your left elbow bends. You rotate and turn to the left. And as you breathe in, come back to centre. Arms stay level. As you breathe out, your right elbow bends, you turn to the right, spiral taller. And as you breathe out, come back to centre. Sorry, as you breathe in, come to centre. We're breathing out to rotate. And breathing in to come back to centre. So you get a wonderful opposition here because as your right elbow bends and it draws back, your left fingers draw forward and your head grows taller towards the ceiling. And then you inhale to the centre. As you breathe out, rotate to the left, your right fingers draw further forward. Keep up tall in those sit bones, find even more height in your spine and inhale back to centre. Let's have a couple more each side. So turning to the right, Reach that left arm long in front of you. Find extra height in your spine. Back to centre. Breathing out to rotate, grow tall. Keep your sit bones grounded if you can. And back to centre. Last one each side. Rotate, reach, enjoy that opposition between your right elbow and your left fingers. And centre. Last one. Rotate, grow taller. Reach with those fingertips. And back to centre, let your arms come down. You're coming round onto hands and knees. We're going to start with the baby cat stretch. So hands under shoulders, knees under hips. A little saddle in your lower back. And then take that into your baby cat stretch. So as you exhale, tuck your tail under. Like your whippet, you've just been scolded. Tuck your tail under, let your lower back flatten. Maybe even start to arch a wee bit. And release yourself back to neutral and again so you're getting that little tiny Y of your tail but that's your lower back is the bit that becomes stiff especially for me today my lower back is super stiff and doesn't want to move so I'm teaching it that it doesn't have to perform tricks but it would be quite nice if it moved so we're moving moving through that lower back and then if you wish you can take it further into your cat stretch so start with your lower back use those abdominals Keep using those abdominals as you tuck your bottom couple of ribs up and under. Let that travel up your body like a wave. Let your back arch. Let your shoulder blades glide apart. Your head tucks under and you're looking towards your knees. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, untuck your tail behind you. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen through your body. And you come back and you're looking at the ground just in front of your hands. Breathe in. As you breathe out, tuck your tail under like a scolded whippet, then keep going, draw your belly button up, chuck your bottom couple of ribs up. It's your abdominals that get that movement through your lower back. Then your upper back will happily round all day long. Let your shoulder blades separate, look towards your knees, breathe in. As you breathe out, come back to that neutral position, tail first, lower back, middle back, upper back. You're looking at the ground just in front of your hands. Hip dissociation, keep your elbows long, keep your spine neutral, send your bum towards your heels and there comes a point when you can't go any further because you'd round, that's your range and you come back up. So this is like our hip hinge, well it's not like our hip hinge, it is a hip hinge. 
So we're letting, as we come forward, letting some weight come into those hands, into those shoulders, make sure they're nice and stable, not around your ears. And then as you come back, you nearly feel you're sticking your bottom out behind you. And you keep that little saddle in your lower back and your sit bones widen. And then you come forward and load into those arms. And then, once you've got through the idea of that movement, can we go a bit freestyle here? So can we do a bit of arching? Maybe a bit of circling, a bit of figure eight, a bit of hinging, whatever feels good for your body. Just bringing that movement in. So freestyle in the comfort of your own home when nobody's really watching and seeing what you're up to. You can let your spine extend. Do watch as I just caught myself doing. Watch that your head doesn't fall off when you're doing this. So you're not down here the whole time. Do let your head come up level with the floor a good few times just nice and exploring into those hips and then from here we're coming to standing so if you can come up through a roll up then let's do it tuck your toes walk your hands towards you your knees come up your heels come down your bum comes up your head comes down and you end up folded over those legs and if you need to have your knees bent you have your knees bent i want you to hang out let the back of your head just go. Let your arms hang nice and heavy. On your next breath out, find those abdominals. Use them to draw that pelvis back on top of your legs. And then restack your spine up. Lovely and tall. From there. So a little bit more movement through these shoulders. So can you bring your arms out? Turn your right palm up. Turn and look towards it. Reach your right fingertips away from your left fingertips and then flip those hands over so your right palm goes down, your left palm goes up, turn and look at your up hand and you're switching. So you're looking towards the up hand each time and that rotation is happening around your shoulders. Watch it's not just happening around your forearm, actually get your shoulders doing this reach. Spine goes tall, rib cage is tucked down so your rib cage is not jutted out in front. Keep it tucked down. Let your arms come down by your side. Let's have a couple of circles. So breathe in as your arms come up. Breathe out. Circle those arms really wide. One more that direction. And circle around. Couple the other direction. Try to get loads of movement at your shoulders. Less around your rib cage, although it will lift a bit. But watch it's not all rib cage. Watch it. Your shoulders are doing some movement as well. And bring those arms down by your side. Shrug your shoulders up towards your ears. And down. Shrug your shoulders up. And down. Notice your nice tall spine. We corkscrew to finish. Breathe in. Arms go wide. Breathe out. Hands come behind your head. Breathe in. Shoulders rise up. Breathe out. Shoulders come down. Breathe in. Elbows come back. Breathe out. Reach out wide and down. Last one. Breathe in. Breathe out, hands behind your head. Breathe in, shoulders up to your ears. Breathe out, find space in your neck. Breathe in, elbows go back in space. Breathe out. Arms come wide, your head grows taller. And we smile, hopefully you feel better now. Hope you enjoyed.